supply for yeah in China to achieve the provide uh, enough negative emissions on the one hand, but uh, without threatening the food security and global sustainability on the other hand. So this is a integrated assessment. So this is my uh, structure. And uh, yeah, as you all know that, uh, yeah, uh, there's a the very complex uh, interactions between human system and uh, natural system. So any solution uh, to address, for example, the climate uh, crisis may need uh, the support or resources from other systems like land or water or you know, other energy. So our team actually is trying to, uh, uh, in order to address this uh, planet planetary crisis, and uh, we, uh, our team uh, does research, basically use uh, uh, models to, uh, macroscopic models to uh, study the transformation, system transformation that help us uh, to hit the target of sustainable development and uh, in some uh, maybe cost effective or low risk pathways so to find a, a good pathway to to achieve those uh, great goals so this study is one of the uh, trial in our recent years and uh, yeah the uh, broader background is that uh, in order to achieve uh, carbon neutrality. So on, on the one hand, we can reduce or increase uh, the renewable energy, which is zero carbon and can substitute fossil fuels. But you, we should know that uh, maybe that need a lot of investment and uh, the recent progress may be not in line as uh, expected uh, or rapid as expected. So uh, in order to the side of the story would be increase the negative emissions that can neutralize uh, the residue emissions in the long term and uh, yeah in, in some global assessment like this one uh, IPCC 1.5 uh, special report we can see here that uh, in one of those uh, four representative pathways so uh, the scientist has uh, anticipated that maybe biomass in the yellow uh, color may play a very big role in the near to longer term uh, to provide the negative emissions that is needed to neutralize the uh, yeah the lazy effort in the near term that left leave, may leave a lot of uh, uh, emissions uh, uh, in the near term but uh, yeah so this is one of the possibilities so and anyway bioenergy may be a very important may play a very important role from the yeah uh, global assessment and also uh, from many uh, studies. And, uh, and and as you can see that uh, uh, broadly, yeah, we should uh, look at the negative emissions technologies. And we have a lot of options here as shown here. And here in this study, uh, I just want to emphasize the uh, bioenergy couple equipped with uh, carbon capture. And if you look at the other, uh, uh, the, the numbers, the cost and the potential. So here as highlighted here, uh, the bioenergy uh, plus CCS, uh, sorry, maybe this is US dollar per ton of CO2. They are, their cost is uh, perhaps uh, acceptable compared with other uh, other uh, alternatives. And also low cost, low cost uh, uh, potential that is uh, lower than 100 US dollar per ton CO2, okay? Uh, would be globally and the US would be a, a huge amount of the potential. So this is a, why bioenergy CCS is uh, uh, greatly uh, uh, looked at. And, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we also see that uh, compared, we also have some other negative emissions uh, uh, alternatives like uh, uh, direct air capture. And uh, so some studies has also compared the relative advantage of uh, bioenergy uh, backs and the DAC. So uh, the conclusion that uh, Bax has a positive and negative output as shown here, uh, but a lower uh, deployment cost as shown here. So the cost is lower and uh, we also have uh, energy output because it is uh, energy itself. But it needs a lot of land and water, uh, which can may compete for other resources with agriculture. And also may any expansion in one country may transfer uh, the embedded environmental burdens through the global food supply uh, import and import. So the question here is that uh, how can we provide such a very large scale biomass energy supply without jeopardizing the uh, uh, national food security and also without uh, 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 threatening the global uh, environmental burden 
on the uh, food supply uh, or food trade partners uh, countries like uh, especially when china joins the uh, food trade market this was a big global impact and we studied uh, okay so this we studied uh, did some literature review and look at the, look at the existing studies what they look at they think uh, china's uh, future energy structure and how much bioenergy would be there so we find a very big range as low as some lower part in by 2060 would be six exajoules, but higher end would be over yeah, 50 exajoules. So accounting for uh, six, five percent to yeah, over 60 percent of the total primary energy share. So that is a big range. So anyway, uh, in our study, we take a, a, a medium to lower end as indicated in the red line. So that is about uh, 16 exajoules and also uh, accounting for 17% uh, of the to total primary energy supply in China by 2060. But the big thing for this number is that it can provide uh, 1.3 billion tons of negative emissions of carbon dioxide equivalent at that time, at that, in that year. So it, that is approx approximately equivalent to the land-based uh, terrestrial carbon sinks, I mean, the natural-based solutions. But we also know that this is a big uh, benefit uh, uh, if we can really use this much bioenergy. But on the other hand, we also know that uh, uh, it will have some many multiple side effects on the food system, on the cross-border transfer of the environmental burden to the other countries, like uh, yeah, land competition, and also increase the bi bilateral import of food, and also uh, in rising uh, food prices. So we even though we try to yeah assess is there any uh, optimal pathway for us to achieve the triple goal carbon neutrality as shown here and also food security in the middle and global sustainability i mean without threatening the global uh, trading partners uh, their uh, environmental burden of providing the food that may we need to export to china so we did a yeah a uh, a integrated assessment model with uh, you know the big models global china model in cooperation with iasa in austria so this paper was published recently in on uh, nature food so as you yeah as uh, yeah so i mean maybe my background is a little bit far uh, far from uh, uh, many of you so we are the uh, integrated assessment models so you know perhaps many of you may know that there are some big teams all over the world and also we are developing the imed model in in our team and uh, yeah, but in this time, so we are using or collaborating with IASA using their global model, which is a partial equilibrium agriculture economic model. And also, of course, in our, uh, just one word about our, our model system. So it is, uh, you know, uh, incorporated in, into our uh, IMED model system at our university. So it's a part of the very important part of the global model. Is, uh, yeah, it's a very important part of the module in our whole system. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, in our community, we normally yeah uh, uh, try to consider so many aspects, as I showed in the first slide, uh, natural and human system, and to find a by compare the cost effectiveness and also compare the potential uh, trade offs and also uh, uh, try to maximize the synergy while uh, minimize the uh, potential uh, uh, trade offs in order to find a uh, we we call it the a pathway or policy, big, a good, a great policy mixture, and also a optimized pathway to help us achieve uh, the great goals on the left hand hand side. So anyway, here by using the global 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 model, so we set up a uh, 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 seven uh, uh, scenarios, uh, so step by step, as you know. So reference is SSP two, and without its big uh, ex expansion of the bioenergy. But uh, the second scenario is we expand bioenergy supply in China. So all the 16 extra joule is planted in China domestically. So, so you know, you can imagine that it will occupy additional uh, uh, land to produce those huge amount of bioenergy. And then the food price of other crops and livestock may increase in China. So leading us to we have to yeah import an additional amount of uh, of food uh, from other uh, provinces uh, other uh, countries 
And so the other four, five scenarios to examine uh, if, yeah, if in the second scenario, we may face a lot of uh, 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 conflicts, maybe, yeah, this will threaten our food, uh, food security because we, are, we will face uh, increased price, uh, food prices and, and decreased uh, food availability and calorie intake. So we try to solve those uh, food security step by step. One is to uh, free the trade. So that means we still allow China to import uh, the uh, main staple food because you know we also have some red lines for uh, uh, import uh, self-sufficiency for the three main staple uh, crops like uh, uh, rice, corn, and wheat. So in the third scenario, we try to relax it. So in order to uh, uh, lower the uh, domestic price, and then we will also see maybe some negative impact will be happening in the trading partners. So the next four scenarios is to enhance the domestic uh, food system efficiency, which is defined as we increase the yield of the three uh, uh, main crops, and also we reduce reduce the food loss and uh, food waste in the distribution and consumption uh, phase. And then also, we also try to uh, adjust the diet uh, to reduce the consumption of the uh, uh, meat and substitute by, by the uh, uh, plant-based food. But also we also refer to some uh, uh, guidelines in China. So it's not just to reduce it uh, uh, drastically, but also in line with the China's own healthy diet guidelines. And then final one is to yeah, mix the following uh, the above uh, four scenarios. So make a, a optimized uh, policy mix. So I, 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 I try to be a little bit fast in, in the following slides. So if you have uh, interest, you can read our paper on, on, on nature food. So because of time limitation. So the first slides uh, we look at the, if we only expand the bioenergy, what will happen? So we, we do see some uh, disastrous impact like uh, we need a lot of uh, 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 51 million hectares of uh, uh, land to produce bioenergy in China. This is, is approximately equal to the whole land area of Thailand. And then this five, uh, 550 million hectares uh, is in the expense of the other land use like cropland, grassland, and other natural vegetation land. So you can imagine that we have a reduced cropland, grassland, other natural land, vegetation. So the food price will increase. And also maybe the, for the natural vegetation, maybe the biodiversity will also even uh, uh, deteriorate. So in order to provide the, the bioenergy uh, energy plant. And also we can see that uh, the uh, agriculture prices, uh, aggregated price increased by uh, 23%, and uh, the capita daily calorie decreased by 8%. Another, yeah, of course, but good news is that the ir irrigation water, nitrogen use, and the AFALU greenhouse gas emissions could reduce because we, we produce less uh, uh, food, but more uh, maybe natural uh, uh, irrigated uh, bioenergy. So we see some, anyway, we see some uh, negative impact. So we, as I introduced, we uh, find some uh, uh, measures step by step to reduce it, like uh, free the trade. Uh, limitation, and then we can see that, uh, yeah, sure, uh, uh, our uh, the self sufficiency rate of the, uh, uh, you know, the rice and the maize will reduce to uh, less than 50, uh, 95 percent, especially wheat and rice. But okay, uh, maize is still okay. But then, uh, on the other hand, so other countries like uh, Australia and uh, yeah, uh, Thailand should may need to increase a lot of uh, export to China of the wheat or other rice and so on. So which also creating a lot of uh, environmental burden like irrigation water or fertilizer use and increased uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So we accounted those embedded uh, environmental burden on the other countries. So then we also uh, try to, you know, uh, add the, uh, uh, the other measures like uh, in addition to free trade, but the, we increase the yield in China and reduce the food loss in China and uh, uh, switch to healthy diet in China and also combine all the other three, four uh, uh, measures. And then we do see some uh, 
positive um, signals that uh, the yeah uh, environmental burden like uh, nitrogen use, water use, and other agricultural land use, I mean, the virtual land uh, in other countries, uh, the rest of the world will reduce uh, gradually. So that is good news. So I don't want to go into each number uh, because of time limitation. So if we, anyway, if we combine all these uh, 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 optimized uh, uh, measures, so in, in the food system scenario, that is an enhanced food efficiency scenario. So every indicator as shown in this radar uh, chart would be much better than the dashed area, which is uh, even the baseline. So without bioenergy uh, uh, expansion scenario. So the the area, the green area here is uh, inside uh, the area of the dashed line. That means, yeah, every indicator improves. Um, so we can produce, produce, yes, we can produce so much bioenergy. And also we don't need to mean that uh, calorie intake will reduce, but either even it increases. And also the other prices is also lower and also irrigation water lower and also other uh, imported or virtual fertilizer use is also lower. So that is a, a great way of uh, solving it. And also the uh, virtual uh, use of nitrogen, irrigation water and agricultural land in the rest of the world also performs better than, than before. So that is overall image. So for specific numbers, you can read our paper again. So we also tested the robustness of this uh, study. So in addition to the seven scenarios, we added nearly 100 other scenarios to test the sensitivity and uh, uh, to the assumptions and the parameters. So uh, overall, uh, it is uh, uh, robust. Uh, and also our previous findings are, are, are uh, we have a relatively high confidence on our yeah, previous find, main findings. And also, so this leads uh, to a like a take home message is that China can achieve carbon neutrality via large scale bioenergy production, domestic production with huge negative emission uh, potential. This is 1.3 billion tons of uh, CO2 equivalent without endangering China's domestic food security or increasing the environmental burden of its food trade partners. So these are the some uh, uh, graphic abstract of the previous findings and also we did some uh, very brief uh, uh, interpretation of the of, of our findings for example uh, one thing is that we can double in the uh, emission space of china by 2060 because uh, this 1.3 billion tons of uh, co2 equivalent negative emissions is comparable to the terrestrial uh, and marine organic carbon sink which is uh, 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 concluded or uh, uh, calculated by the uh, great uh, some other expert in China, so then it can we can uh, the emission space in twenty sixty would be nearly three billion tons of CO two under the carbon neutrality target. So this can reduce the cost of the reduction in other in other sectors. And also we looked at the yield up scenario. So uh, this is the ideal of theoretical uh, productivity based on the agriculture expert on uh, crop. Uh, corn, rice, and wheat yield. So our assumption in the blue line is, I mean, just uh, maybe closed the gap by 75% uh, of, of, of the gap in the base year. So this is a not achieved the ceiling or, or the theoretical uh, productivity, but just a 60, a 75%. That means it, to ensure the feasibility of our assumption. And also we compared the director change, as we uh, I introduced in the beginning, so we referred to the Chinese directory guidelines released by China's own government in 2022, uh, and find that our assumptions is more or less, yeah, more or less, uh, 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 fall in the range of the recommended uh, intake of different uh, 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 animal-based food. So we should say that this assumption that in the healthy diet scenario is still also uh, uh, not that uh, uh, unrealistic. And also for the future, yes. I think we should, yeah, almost finished. Uh, we Maybe we need to seriously think of uh, some roadmap to uh, uh, realize the, this not large number of uh, CO2 emission, uh, uh, biomass, biomass uh, energy production in the longer term. And also, yeah, finally, yeah, uh, as I said, we are a, a integrated assessment model team. So, you know, our our team also provides some training workshop in China. So, 
maybe if you in the future you have any of you have interest you are welcome to uh, join us or contact us or collaborate with us so thank you so much thank you very much han cheng such a, such an interesting study you've conducted we have a couple of questions uh, from the audience written in the box. Uh, one is by Jikai Zhao from UTRGV saying, I am curious about which bioenergy, biogas, liquid fuels, etc., produced in this study. If we use biomass, corn, corn stover with straw or cotton stock to produce such bioenergy, we don't have to occupy new croplands to do so. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Did I stop sharing? Yes. Anyway, here we we are many use the short rotation plantations, and uh, we didn't still we didn't uh, 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 you know uh, study investigate how this much uh, bioenergy will be used in the, in the end use sectors or in the uh, uh, energy transformation sectors. We are still we are doing that research, but uh, we imagine that uh, most of it may be used for uh, power generation, and uh, either mixed with coal equipped with CSS and others or used for heating. So one of our, another, another of our, my PhD student is now study how we can digest this uh, bioenergy. Yes, uh, by 2060 in different sectors. So yeah, but rough image, it would be most of them will be used for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, power generation and the heating uh, uh, generation because, you know, biogas, bio, liquid you know because uh, china's current uh, strategy uh, and also past experience for example the transportation sector we are uh, more uh, uh, maybe we will go uh, be more reliant on on the electric vehicle uh, rather than the bio diesel or biofuel powered uh, 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 vehicle and in the household residential sector uh, we did have some pilot project uh, in the past to expand the biogas project in the villages, but that is not very much successful. And uh, so in the current uh, expert or consensus, it seems that we will not use too much biogas in the future. So that is, uh, so maybe the, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, the short rotation plantations and uh, the energy crops is the main uh, yeah, form of the bioenergy as assumed here. Okay, so did I, I don't know if I, yeah. yeah. So you did. Question. Thank you very much. Okay. Also, another question: How much agricultural land will we need to meet the twenty sixties goal? Question by Wang Lu. Yeah, uh, you mean uh, the land for you know uh, for uh, for producing or providing bio bioenergy? I guess so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the slides uh, uh, I mentioned the number is it is uh, fifty one million hectare. Hectares, yes. Yeah, that is uh, that is uh, as I said, is uh, it almost the same as the whole land area of uh, of Thailand. So it's a huge amount of land. So I that is say. impressive. Yeah, impressive. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, the sheer amount of land is impressive. I also have a question of my own. How realistic or likely do you think it is that that all those parallel measures? would be implemented to mitigate the impacts of the bioenergy demand. The increase yeah. in yield, the decrease in food waste, the change in diets, et cetera. Yes, uh, so that's why in the, the last slides, we, we uh, theoretically, we uh, checked partly uh, how realistic or how feasible it is. So uh, just to want to show that our assumption on the how, how much the yield gap can be closed and uh, uh, what is a diet, healthy diet look like, especially the animal-based food. So by compare with the guideline, and also uh, I forgot to mention that uh, on the food loss, currently China wasted about 27% uh, of the uh, food. So maybe comparable to, to the global level, global maybe around 30%. And in our assumption here, you just want to halve the uh, food loss to from 27% to yeah around 13% food loss. So uh, I, I, I hesitate to comment that, okay, so the, the ideal uh, assumed measures here in our study is uh, 
is great, is doable. So just to uh, want to emphasize that if we do this to this extent, then this will have huge benefit on the other invisible aspect for the bioenergy, for uh, carbon neutrality. So this is uh, maybe our scientific value of our, or our intention of uh, doing this research. But uh, really, uh, we are not the policy makers. So we cannot say too much about, okay, we should do this. We can do this. Okay, thank you.